Hello, loved ones. Welcome, new subscribers. Thank you, subscribers, for following, sharing, liking the channel, sharing our videos. We appreciate you. My name is Reverend Penelope Stewart. You can follow Chemistry on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and on YouTube right here. Uh, thank you for being here with me today. Uh, I know it's been a while since I've, I've posted a video. It's been a while since I posted a video and talked about different subject, a subject, a topic video. So I thought I would come here today and post a topic video. And today's topic is shadow work. Shadow work and what what is what really consists of shadow work. What really is shadow work? Um, if you guys have been following me, you know I just create, uh, I have a Know Thyself course that's coming up. Uh, gosh, I hope I didn't break my nail. But I have a Know Thyself course that's coming up. And in that course, there's a lot of shadow work, inner child work, uh, a lot of trauma healing. I mean, that is, is phenomenal. Wherever you at and whatever healing you need, if you need some shadow work done, some inner child healing done, this course does it. The exercises and the workshops inside the course are just, I mean, it's... It has been great in helping me on my spiritual journey and having a closer walk with spirit. So uh, I should have a video there with the link. If you're interested in the course, you, you're welcome to sign up. There should be a link there to register. I have some workshops coming up and I'll leave some links to those workshops. Have one coming up Thursday and then I have one coming up February 2nd to give you a little bit more insight about what the Know Thyself course is all about, if you're interested in that. But I thought I would come here and talk about shadow work because I'm learning so much. I'm healing so much trauma in doing the shadow work. And, and now that I'm looking at it and looking at initiations, this is really what they require in initiations. If you're going into Ifa, um, if you're going into Vudum, this is the work that is required. I mean, this is character work. This is deep work, getting into your thoughts, knowing more about yourself and your family, and healing those ancestors that transfer some of that intergenerational trauma. And some of it we don't even realize. It's, it's just unconscious. You know, it's not till we start looking at the family tree, a lot of this stuff starts to come out. And in the Know Thyself course, we go, you know, that coaching uh, program, we go really, really deep into family uh, psycho genealogy. We go really deep into that, looking at the family tree and looking at the behaviors and attitudes of the people in the family. There's transmuting that trauma and it's work uh, you know it doesn't happen overnight because it took you a lifetime to get this and some of it is just impulsive it's just called it a dna and it needs to be integrated so there, there's there's a lot there's some integration going on there there's a lot of healing going on there um but it's well worth it because behind the trauma i'm seeing a lot of gifts come out of the trauma when I tra tra start to transmute it and transform it, I'm seeing a lot of gifts come out of it. You know, it's not looking so ugly. You know, th the perfect example of this is the soul path to the Orisha. You know, talking to those ancestors and revealing some of that stuff and telling the story. You know, uh, I just cannot put it all into words. But shadow work is, it is a must on your spiritual journey. Not, and I, I'm surprised a lot of uh, spiritualists are not talking about this. They talk about the candle work and all this other stuff. But this is where the real work is. This is where the real power comes in right there, uh, working with the ancestors. And I'm just going to talk about shadow work and focusing right now on psychogenealogy because a lot of what 
the programs that you see in shadow work, we get them from our families. Someone taught you to do be that because once you get in the shadow work, you be like, okay, why do I do this and why do I do that? And that's going to lead you back to your family tree to get some of that stuff out. So let me just dive in here. I got my reading glasses on today. I need my reading glasses, y'all. I'm get, I'm starting not, not to be able to see well. So I got my reading glasses on here. Uh, let me clean them off. So I'm going to dive in here. A family tree is more than just a drawing or a collection of names, dates, and family history. It can be a powerful tool for understanding and healing the person's circumstances and problems. Psychogenealogy, psychogenealogy on the premises that the unconscious behaviors can be transmuted from generation to generation, and they can. These behaviors prohibit the self-realization of the individual. For an individual to be aware of these and break the cycle, he or she has to study the family tree. You have to study the family tree. It, it, it's so important. And I didn't want to do that at first. It's, it's because I didn't want to come out of denial about what everything that was going on in the family. I wanted to, you know, keep this false image that our family had created. I didn't want to look at the backdrop of everything that was going on that was dark in the family. And that's something that's a requirement to do uh, in order to heal some of that trauma that's going on in the family. And psychogenealogy, which uh, allies genealogy and psychology, psychology is a therapeutic frame which seeks to identify and treat the effects of transgenerational transmission in a person's life. This approach is based on the observation that transmission within the family groups occurs across generation in different and sometimes curious ways. Uh, what was what was very interesting to me when I started doing my shadow work is that I didn't think me and my mom had anything in common. And I always said I would live my life a lot differently to her. But as I began to look at the patterns, the family patterns that were repeated, because a lot of us, we went on to repeat some of those family patterns verbatim. I know my cousin did. She repeated some of her mother's uh, pattern verbatim. I mean, you know, they did by verbatim. And when I looked at mine, I repeated the... Uh, I repeated the pattern of my mom verbatim, unconsciously. It's really scary when we start to look at it because unconsciously I did this and it was not purpose at all. And I just cried when I looked at that, you know, uh, that's when the forgiveness came in. No judgment came in about the ancestors and just loving myself completely the way I am and learning to love the ancestors the way they are and, and transforming and transmuting that trauma. I mean, it was just, it's a profound experience when we think that we're so much different from them, uh, especially the ones who have uh, made some mistakes in our family. When we actually start looking at the family patterns, we realize we have some of those behaviors and transmissions as well. You know, it, it was pitiful. I, I, I I was just, I cried, and I still cry sometimes, but on the other side of this trauma, on the other side of those genetic energy patterns are some really good ones, but we, you know, until we do the work, you don't see them. You don't see them. Programs could be passed on from one generation to the next, and how our life is often reflecting circumstances, traumas, and dates of events belonging to other members of our family. Sometimes the transmission of programs can lead to a health disorders, or it represents the expression of emotional stress of a parent, grandparent, aunt, or uncle who could not resolve the particular conflict during their lifetime. 
A distress which circulates within the clan or family can be expressed by a descendant through an illness or unwanted behavior. So you'll see too, like like they'll say cancer is hereditary or diabetes, you know, because you, you, they're passing on the same eating habits. You see what I'm saying? So sometimes it just get transferred over, even because um, there is a history of alcoholism or heavy drinking in my family. And so I've seen it get passed down from one generation to the next. And those, I think those are the worst to me because it, it unconsciously, it'll start spanning out generations. It's so hard to get that, the addiction, you know, or alcoholism out. And some of it, 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 it may not even be that. It might just be a dysfunction. Sometimes that's not even present. It could just be a dysfunction in the family that looks like an addiction. I've seen that too. That's why I love this uh, Know Thyself program because it can, it addresses all of that the dysfunction, the addiction, and all of that. When we add psychological and emotional aspects to the family tree, the invisible unconscious begin to surface into the conscious mind to be healed. It is fast, it's a fascinating journey. It really is. It, my walk with spirit has become more. It, 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 it's just closer. So closer walk with spirit, the more I get to know myself. Uh, and I'm, my, I'm learning more about my ancestors too. They're making themselves more known to me as I do this healing. And, you know, I didn't know I was, how I was going to be able to do this or how I was going to be able to forgive uh, all of that inherited trauma. But I'm doing it. We are born in a family with connections to our ancestors that are invisible. According to Young, the psychologist, these connections are in, in the unconscious mind. In psychogenealogy, we call these unconscious connections invisible loyalties. They can be positive and bring us blessings and resources that enhance our lives like humor, creativity, and enthusiasm. They can also bring unresolved issues like sadness, relationship problems, or debt. And that's the thing, too. Uh, what caused some unwanted trauma, I traced that back in my family. A divorce. My grandfather and grandmother divorced 24, you know, they were married 24 years. And it, it created trauma on... The kids, my mother, them, because they went on and they couldn't have successful relationships. Neither one, I mean, it's, I think it was one uncle that had a successful relationship. His wife just passed over not too long ago, but they could not have successful relationships. Again, this was done unconsciously. This was a trauma, you know, that that was done unconsciously. They were very, they were just not aware of it. In general, all families create suffering through secrets. Favoritism, abandonment, injustice, violence, incest, and unresolved grieving. But they are not the only source spreading toxicity in our lives. I saw that too. I Because once I started looking at, okay, where does this come from in my family? I knew my family had it. You know, I saw, you know, some of the things I had and then tracing it back to my family and saying, okay, how did my family get this stuff? How did they get some of these patterns? You know, uh, and I had to look at society. The social structure, no matter what their tendencies or history generates suffering. Cause you look at slavery, colonialism, you look at some of the company, some of these corporation policies, uh, you know, it just creates toxicity and then it trickles on down to affecting family especially when it comes to um slavery and colonialism i mean it has wreaked ha havoc on the consciousness of humans it has really done us a job and so i seen I, when i looked at some of society structure then i kind of understand where some of the patterns and stuff were coming from. Once we become aware of these negative elements, but don't have deep shifts of consciousness, the liberation from these energies that parasite our body, mind, and spirit repeatedly keep us from living the life to its fullest. 
So what has happened here, and to keep a long story short, uh, you know, you're getting rid of those viruses and programs that's, that's in the unconscious that, you know, you don't pay attention to. And that's what happens. I mean, it's like the mind has a virus in it. You know, it's not functioning properly and not to its highest potential until we start doing the shadow work and start getting rid of it. The good news is that there are many tools to clean, liberate, and transform the past suffering when mental awareness is not enough to liberate the destructive energy patterns that control our body and spirit. So, you know, there is other ways to do it. Uh, there's There are many healing modalities. Uh, but uh, I, me, I believe that awareness is the first key, bringing you aware of it. Because in the Know Thyself program, in that first phase, if you don't know, if you don't think nothing is wrong with you, I promise you in the first phase of that program, you're going to see everything that's wrong with you. And then we can question where did it come from? And then start looking at the family dynamics. And then start doing healing up on other levels. Understanding the patterns of one's unconscious mind allows us to live the present moment without fears or beliefs that don't belong to us. This is a way to transmute our ancestral past. And that's the way we do it. You know, it's not easy. And I'm not saying it's an overnight process. It's not an overnight process, you guys. I'm still transmuting trauma. There's a lot because we inherited trauma. Uh, especially if you are a person of color. Uh, and then I'm sure if you're not a person of color, trying to work out those other genetic behaviors, especially if there was colonialism or racism, that that that's something else to work work through. So it is not an overnight process. It takes time. It takes time doing your own processing, but it is a beautiful uh, thing to do. It is a beautiful thing to do and it's very, very rewarding. Psychogenealogy helps a person be free from the negative psychological inheritance. And I, I'm definitely, you know, I see the negative psychological inheritance, you know, it's something. This liberation can happen by identifying a repetitive transgenerational psychological problem. We can then eliminate by neutralizing its negative energies that have been transmuted to the descendants. You know, my stuff, our stuff stand, spans out with three or four generations. And it takes at least, you know, if you start, if you're working on it specifically for you and trying to stop some of those blocks from being passed on to your family, you know, getting it out. If you get it out before you have children, you have a better chance of having a healed generation. But if you your kids like are in their teens or whatever, it may take a while to get it out. It might take three, some, they say it take up to three or four generations to get it out, you know. But the healing starts with you. Because even if we're healing ourselves, we're still healing generations of trauma. All right? We don't want to pass it on. We don't want to pass these ideas and these behaviors. We don't want to pass them on. And Jungian psychology, the shadow archetype may refer to an unconscious aspect of the personality which the conscious ego does not identify as itself you know that 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 is really what um shadow work is all about we're not you know we're not conscious that we don't want to be conscious this all this is going on in our family we want to think our family is all loving and all this stuff uh, especially when we go into psychogenealogy. And this, it, we don't blame family either. This is not about blaming either. This is about healing and refining. But when we go in and start looking at things and where we get these ideologies and things from, you'd be like, oh my gosh, my family needed to upgrade some of the things they, um, their mindset, you know, some of their behaviors, they needed to upgrade that. And it, it just kind of stucks. So it's really nobody to blame here. The entirety of the unconscious 
everything of which a person is not fully unconscious. In short, the shadow is the unknown side. All right. And so if you're interested in shadow work, you know, if you if look, go look up. There's lots of information on shadow work out there uh, that will get you started with shadow work. And it's an ongoing thing. It kind of never really stops, you know, because we're always refining ourselves. It took us a lifetime to get like this. So it's going to take a while to get rid of some of the programming, uh, to get rid of some of the programming. So be very patient. Be very loving with yourself when you're doing this kind of work. Again, if you're interested in doing any shadow work and just trying to refine yourself. I'll leave some links here down here to the Know Thyself uh, free webinars and you can come in and see what that's all about. But I hope this 